because it's Christmas I, and it's winter is, you know, yeah, fluff. I, I think that's a good flavor. As they say in the food shows, that's a good flavor profile. Yeah. Fluff and peanut butter. <laughs> so that is the the Terra Fest, a Christmas horror convention, and I believe it's Con Conroe, Texas. Conroe, Texas. I've I've Conroe, never Texas? been there. I've been to Houston. I think it's a suburb of of Houston. So I'll be there all weekend, and I'm ready to answer all everyone's poltergeist questions. So, um, nice. So, well, so Leo, you, I was going to ask me if, if uh, he found that uh, trailer. I did. I did. All right. Well, we haven't gotten right, so, to that yet. No, I know that. I just want to make sure he had. Yeah. It. Yeah. I was actually. I was going to just send him a message. But yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. That, um, that was that was something else. Ben sent me last minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, that was backstage, and you were I uh, doing the Leo. Yeah. I'll be right back, guys. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. I forgot what I was going to say. It's okay. So we're, it's that kind of night. So as far as um, I, I do have a question. And I'm going to go back yes. to the poltergeist. I feel yes. Um, besides the clown, I mean, what was the scariest moment you had filming that? Well, this is the thing. You know, um, I wasn't scared at all making that film. There was actually nothing scary actually on set, and you know, everything was like laid in afterwards. And they shot the film completely out of order. And what makes it so interesting? I, and it's funny you ask that because I, we asked Toby, you know, on the set, we're like, we're supposed to be screaming at these ghosts and, and all these things happening. And I said, we said, I asked Toby, I said, what, what exactly are we scared of? He says, we don't know yet, but just think of the scariest thing that you can possibly think of. And that's what you're screaming at. So we, we all got in our heads. I, I had, I think I grew up in a haunted house and I was terrified of so many little odds and ends um, that, I kind of tapped into those fears as a kid. So that's, for me, I was bringing out not what I was afraid of on set, but what I was afraid of in actual life. And I was kind of just channeling that, so to speak, you know. So like when we're looking at, like for okay. instance, like when we're looking at the ghosts on the monitors, for instance, and they said to us, um, we we're looking at plywood. We were just looking at boxes. And, they, and then Toby would just yell things out like, the ghosts are walking down the stairs. You're looking, you're all looking. So we're all emoting looking basically at nothing and when the ghosts were flying around he had like a stick and he said just follow this as your eye line and you're terrified and he talked us through the scene too and said okay the ghosts are coming in i'm like ah, oh, you know so there was we were really acting against like like a back nothing really you know it was all That's in our minds cool. yeah it was really neat i think if you're in any special effect movie like that um especially today with all the cgi you're really mm -hmm. you have to just emote from you know things from the inside and get it out there just, you'd have to think of those scary things like, wait yeah. till your father gets home. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, you, yeah. If your dad is like that, yeah, that's a good thing to use. <laughs> well, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, growing up uh, and you thought the house was haunted. Have you uh, had any paranormal experiences? I, You know, it's so funny you asked that. Uh, I really didn't believe in that much. You know, I believe that there's a lot of questions unanswered in our universe, and which maybe we'll explain. But I went to this place with David, you know, uh, David from Terrifier. And mm -hmm. we were at a horror convention in Kentucky. And we went to this place called the Waverly Sanitarium. I don't know if you've ever heard oh, of it. Yeah, Waverly mm -hmm. Hills. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't think much of it. I thought it was kind of a joke. I was like, ah, this is nothing, you know. So, you know, we get there and they take it. They don't tell us anything in advance. And they said, just take us on this tour. I saw things that I cannot explain. They're the strangest things. So I saw these like caped things darting under doorways and i'm like and i asked the tour guide i said so um what was that and he's like those are the shadow people and i'm like what and he says yeah the shadow people like it's a common this is given it always happens people see it and you know it's unexplained phenomenon it's like no big deal yeah, yeah it's no big deal it's like <laughs> yeah shadow people paranormal activities here it's okay it's all easy you know <laughs> so the, yeah so I, and then meanwhile i felt like a pressure on my head david um, had some whispering in his ear and I was like, it was a really, I mean, it was a spooky place. We saw like orbs flying around. All of us saw orbs and I thought maybe it was my eyes. I tried to debunk it as they say. There was no traffic, no street lights. There was nothing. This place is in the middle of nowhere in Kentucky. Um, but yet we saw orbs flying around and all of us did. And I thought it was just me. I didn't even want to say anything because you're like, they'll think I'm insane. 
But it, <laughs> it's like, oh, I see oars and I see these shadow things going under doorways. Yeah. But they were, but everyone saw them. So um, I heard NASA, speaking of NASA, you know, I'm into like Artemis and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but anyhow, they supposedly they came out to the sanitarium to check it out. And I don't, I'm not sure what they found, but that's what the, the tour guide supposedly told us. Not supposedly. I mean, he did tell us that and maybe they found out something, but I, I have no mm -hmm. idea. Uh, well, I, I, I'm into a lot of the, like the paranormal stuff. And, uh, there's, um, uh, there's a place called Skinwalker Ranch. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I've, I, I've seen those kind of things on the history channel. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. They got a show, on, uh, show on history channel, but they actually have a science crew there doing oh, wow. like experiments on the place and everything. And, uh, uh, there's, uh, a guy that actually worked for, uh, he's done work for like NASA, the government, yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he's like a, a, a rocket scientist and they got him on the ranch, like doing experiments and trying to find out stuff too. What did and, he uh, find? Did he, did he discover any, like, anything? well, uh, the, they, you got to watch the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the biggest scared. thing, is, the biggest thing is they've, uh, determined that there's a, there's some sort of like, uh, a power source or something above the ranch. Um, that they've been trying to measure, but no mm -hmm. matter what they try to do to measure it, a lot of the tests go wrong. Uh, like, uh, they'll, you know, right before they run a test, like everything breaks, there's a lot of power outages. Uh, so, um, I hate it when that yeah. happens, you know, yeah, <laughs> damn aliens, you know, they just don't want us to learn anything about them. Well, they, they uh, <laughs> uh, there was a guy, uh, that does work for NASA there. They brought him in as a specialist, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with a weather balloon with all this, uh, 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 machinery on it for for tracking, and they put it up. The weather balloon disappeared. Wow, that's and, that's scary. You know, wow. yeah. The guy said he's been doing this for decades, and he's never had a balloon disappear. Just makes you wonder, well, like, how does that how does that happen? Like, you know, yeah, it, you should, crazy just stuff. Aliens. Just let the just let the air out of the balloon; it'll disappear. Yeah, that's yeah. They, you just know, let's just, the aliens just don't <laughs> want us to learn about them. You know, well, that's. That's that's the whole conspiracy. So, it's true. Well, there's reports <laughs> of shadow people on the ranch as well. So I don't know if there's like you know, yeah, that's, uh, that's maybe it's interdimensional people or I don't know. And this is like the vor it's like poltergeist. It's like the vortex for entry for you know all these multiple worlds colliding at the Skinwalker Ranch. I don't know. I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. So in well, recap, yeah. folks, in recap. <laughs> we've we've covered poltergeist. <laughs> Jaws, Skinwalker Ranch, and Aliens. And everything. <laughs> All in one fucking show. Yeah, wow. And the, and, the night, and the night has just begun. Right? Who knows what we may discover this evening. So Everything's open. We, when you got out of Hollywood, like Jeff mentioned earlier, you went into behind the camera directing and writing. Um, and I believe I read somewhere that at the age of 15, you wrote and directed and produced a, sh uh, a, a movie called The Crystal. Yes, uh, which was, won some uh, awards. I, you know, I, on the set of Poltergeist, um, I really fell in love with the, with the whole filmmaking process, and I made these little Super Eight movies, and I showed Mr. Spielberg my films, and he, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I thought I thought he liked them, and then one day he says, "Oliver, I want to give you something," and he gives me the still the silver case, and lo and behold, there's a bullyu. 5008S. That's the name. It's a fancy Super 8 camera. And mm -hmm. he says, this is yours, and I want you to go make films. And um, so I start shooting little Super 8 claymation mm -hmm. movies, and I, I make this epic film called Day Pac-Man Ate the Earth. And <laughs> I know, it's brilliant. This is a 10-year-old, you know, I think they should, we should do a remake today, you know, with, with ILM doing the effects. Basically, the storyline is Pac-Man, you know, saves, you know, is going to attack the Earth, but Miss Pac-Man um, dilutes his power with love and saves earth right before pac-man you know basically destroys the planet and this is my nine-year-old you know conception so i made that and that was my it was all claymation and i showed it to spielberg and he liked it and and i continued making little movies and eventually i was like you know i told him i said i'd like to potentially make films as a career and he said well you should go to film school um mm -hmm. and he told me to go to usc so uh, I said, how do I get in there? I mean, my grades are just okay. And I know it's really tough. And he said, it's okay. I'll write you a recommendation letter. 
So I said, okay, now I'm in. I'm, I'm going to USC film school. Steven Spielberg's going to write me a letter. And he does. And they reject me. And, <laughs> and I'm like, how did this happen? I, you know, Steven has his name on the building outside. He's on the scoring stage. They have to let me in. But like, so they basically told me, I, I was so ballsy, I guess. I call up the, the film school and I said, you have to let me in. You've got to let me in. And they're like, no, we don't. We won't. And then they say, we won't be told what to do by Mr. Spielberg or anyone else. So I said, fine. So actually, I marched down to the film school and I managed to get a meeting uh, with the dean of the film school. And I show him my film. I show him The Crystal, among other little movies. And I said, you got to let me in. you know. And he says, OK. So he overrides the admission committee, which is like, I guess, unheard of. And they said, OK. It was like Animal House, where they decided to put me on special status. And I said, <laughs> and I'm like, OK, what is special status? He says, you have to maintain a 3.0 average for the consecutive four years at the school. Otherwise, you're out. And we're, you're going to have to meet with them uh, like your person, like every semester at the beginning to see what your GPA is. And I always got the feeling there, some of the people didn't want me to pass. I don't know. It was really, it was like a scene of a film. I'd sit down for that meeting. They pull up my grades and they'd go, okay, I'll see you next semester. And that was it. So, and, and meanwhile, I mean, I had the best professors there, the best friends I've made films with, and they were fantastic. So it was totally worth it. But getting in there was a was a small like nightmare. You, you had somebody well, on the admissions board that was having like a power trip, and yeah, I don't know what was going on there. It was the strangest thing too. Um, and they just said we're not going to be told what to do um, by no by anyone, you know, out there. And you know, well, I, I mean, I can't look. argue that. You know, yeah. you know I can see like the conversation. That. Don't tell me what I can and can't do. Oh, I could just see That's the conversation. You know, no, you Stephen know. wouldn't put me in the movie. Why should I let him in the school? No, you know, it's not happening. I, so many <laughs> students. I mean, this is them at USC film. It's the best place. You learn everything. It's like boot camp. But there's a lot of love hate relationships I learned when I was there, which was so interesting. Um, I, I don't know if this is true. Maybe you guys can find this out. Whether this is like hearsay, urban legend, or whatnot. But I heard like John Carpenter, you know, got in trouble. I guess for not using equipment that he wasn't allowed to use, making this movie Dark Star. So I guess there was bad blood with him in the film school. So they eventually, you know, when he became very successful, they they wanted money from him, uh, as as USC always asked for that. So I guess he wrote a two letter. He wrote uh, on a page. He sent it back to USC and it had two words at the center of the page. And I'll let you guess what those two words were. Mm -hmm. Have a nice day. Yeah, f you. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know if that's actually true, but I I heard that at USC. Um, and even though I, you know, I, I'm, I'm disparaging the, the, the film school name right now, I think it's the best place. I mean, I really, I recommend going there. I think it's the best program. I think you will meet great people. You have the best professors and it's, it's, you learn everything you need to do to make a movie there. So it is, it's a fantastic place to go to film school. Wow. What, what are you working on, Leo? Uh, looking up that, uh, John Carpenter. I, I don't know if that's true. I'd be really right. curious. But that well, was... I think I figured Jeff Jeff wants to to get into uh, the 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 trailer that you have, but I'm going to let yeah. him bring that. I'm going to let him bring that in if he remembers. The you have a, yeah, you have a film that's out. You worked on it. Uh, COVID when COVID was here. Yes, we were, I did this film. I did it. We made this film in uh, Florida, where I am actually right now. Um, it was in the height of the summer, and it's about this. Uh, fan who becomes obsessed with this actor who was in this 1980s cult classic movie called Chain Face Clown. And she's what becomes the super fan and she seduces him. And when she, he doesn't want to spend his whole entire life with her, he, she goes into plan B and basically traps him and lives out her fantasies and has reenact scenes and even tries to write a sequel to the movie that he was in. And all these crazy things happen. And it's called Celebrity Crush. And now it's out, if I can promote it, on Amazon yes. Prime, on Apple, and all those places. I think it's on, even on Tubi right now, too. So you can watch Celebrity Crush on Tubi. So, <laughs> yeah, here's nice. the Leo has a gift. I do. Maybe. I'm not going. Honey, you're going to have all these fans lining up to meet you. I know. You're going to sign a few DVDs and then come back to me. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Pete O'Shea Show. I'm excited right now because Jonathan is going to be signing Chain Face Clown, the Blu-ray re-release. Go see him today. 
fans come to the show to sleep with their favorite horror star, which is you. Hey, I'm Jonathan Blakely. My name's Emily. Do you want to hang out later? There's a tattoo of my face on your leg. Are you freaked out? I really have to get going. You and I were just so good together. It was like I finally met my soulmate. We should just keep in touch online. You're staying right oh. here. This is your new home. I'm Chain hey, Face's yeah. biggest fan. Chain. Hi, hey, kid. Ah. Are you awake? Where am I right now? I'm like, what's going on? You and I could write a prequel to show how that killer came to life. Oh, get out of here now! You love having your fans fawn over you. Can I confess something to you? I just want to go home. I won't let you. Ah! I now have part of you with me, always. Scream! Ah! <laughs> you told me about you. A maniac like you doesn't even know love is! Goodbye, Jonathan. <laughs> let us go, please. Ah! Lights out! That looks yeah, pretty cool. We, we shot cool. that in the height of the summer, saw that sweat, and everything is, is real. Um, so, yeah, it was really fun to do. It was it was hard because I was directing and acting on many of the same scenes. So, mm. uh, that it really makes you appreciate a song like Clint Eastwood. It just makes it look seem so easy, and, it, and it's not. So, right. Clint. Clint. Uh, Clint, Clint brings in Clint. Yeah. <laughs> no, that looked uh, that looked trippy as hell. I think I'm gonna have to watch it. Yeah, uh -huh. it was. Yeah, it, it turned out well. And the actress Alyssa, she was great playing the psycho, and she isn't like that at all. And it's weird because you know we've shown it at some like film festivals, and people are like, "I want to meet." Like they they like her insane side, and Alyssa's this really sweet gal, and she's not like that character at all. But they're like falling in love with the crazy gal. That's that she portrays in the movie. Mm -hmm. Most most of them do. <laughs> the crazier the better. They yeah. Mm -hmm. it's but yeah, it was, it was she she brought it out of her. So she was fantastic. So what was the drive behind making that? Like it, for you, I you know I I hadn't acted in years, and my friends were like, you know, you should act in a movie again, and I'm like, I haven't acted since I was like a kid. And I was thinking of making Celebrity Crush anyways. And I was thinking, you know, I should just try out my hand, play this part. All my friends were like really supportive in film school. They're like, just go for it. Whatever happens, happens. So um, I said, OK, I'm going to I'm going to act in this film. Um, and it was it was pretty intense because it was a fast and furious shoot. And you just had a for me, at least, you know, when you're directing, you're using such a different side of your brain. You have to turn off one side and turn on the other. Um, and then you have to call cut and then you have to be thinking, you know, objectively about, you have to look at your shot list, but then you're going back to another piece of coverage and you have to be emoting again. And for me, at least it was really hard to go in and out of, you know, character. Um, mm -hmm. and, and at the same time you're screaming and then you have to call cut and then you're trying to tell the crew, um, this is what I want you to do. So I found that for the, especially for this kind of genre, um, that was really challenging. I could see that. Need an assistant yeah. director. I, and, and that's what I've heard. I mean, like, that's, if you have a great assistant director, um, yeah. you know, that's that's kind of the secret I've heard with Clint Eastwood, too. Yeah. All righty. Yeah. yeah. Got to give up those reins. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, sh everyone should watch the movie now. And it's, right? it's free on Tubi as well, too. Right. That's yeah, awesome. Uh, I'll have to see it. I haven't Fox. seen it yet. Uh -huh. Which you can find out about in the show notes oh. up above. Go down below our guest. Hey, just if you go look at our right guest show notes, oh. it's gonna it's gonna have there's a paper trail there. Trust me, just you, you'll find it. It's all there. <laughs> well, so you so, were in another horror movie too, right? The Rideshare Killer. Yeah, the Rideshare yeah. Killer. Ashley Myers. Yeah, my friend, I, yeah, my friend Ashley is a really great filmmaker. He wrote a script that I actually directed. He's like Oliver. I'm doing this little movie. Um, that's like the psycho rideshare killer guy, and I'm like, do you want to be in it? And I'm like, sure. So it turns out I get to act with, and this is only recently with uh, Eric Roberts, and he was great. And I never, I was so great to act with an actor of his caliber as in a grown up. I acted with a lot of great actors when I was a kid, but I was an adult now, and he was fantastic on set. And someone at his level 
it's just so professional and, you know, it makes jokes and just makes it a very, you know, lighthearted environment that you just, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it, you're not, you're not taking yourself so seriously. And he was fantastic in it. Too. Right. Yeah. We, we had the pleasure of having him on the show. Uh, much Last seven, or eight months, seven or eight months ago. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, that's he great. is a great guy. Great guy. Um, yeah, so yeah, he's some great yeah. God, he's been in some great movies too. <laughs> Here we yeah, go. We're gonna think? talk about the Eric Roberts movies now. Yeah, no. yeah, <laughs> talk about Star 80. No, we don't have to go yeah. there. <laughs> well, so, so talking about celebrity crush, has there been any time at a convention where you've had like a, a fan that you kind of feel is a little off center or or any well, issues aggressive creeped you out? <laughs> yeah. No, it's funny. I was in I was in the south at this um at this this horror convention there and someone comes up to me this lady and she has these containers and i'm wondering what are these containers it turns out to be honey and she says i, I got you this honey oliver i have this honey for you and i'm like um that's great and i take it and I, i'm appreciative of the honey and i get it was a lot of work to get this from the bees and you know so then i don't think much about it and then she realized and i didn't realize but that was that was a rite of passage that was a connection of marriage pretty much that I was going to have to be with her pretty much forever. Cause I sucked at this honey. So, and she says, Oliver, I gave you this honey. I, I, and I'm like, I know oh, I really appreciate it. And she's like, she was very upset that I didn't want to um, follow through with the, the relationship now that we had with the connection of the honey. So that, that was, mm-hmm. it was rather bizarre. I don't, I never, I never, I didn't realize like honey was part of the, like a mating ritual or, or, or something. Maybe it is. Was her, was her name B? What was her name? B. Yeah, of course, that was her name. Yeah. yeah. Was, yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but it was yeah, it was pretty yeah. crazy, and that kind of inspired. Honestly, that kind of inspired Celebrity Crush. I, I just took Celebrity Crush is more of a black comedy horror. I mean, it's so crazy yeah. and so and so over the top, you know. But that moment, I was thinking, what if like you you had that moment as an actor, you know? Um, I see a sequel. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. Well, you say you it, saved the honey part for the sequel. Well, <laughs> yeah, that'll be the next installment too. We're gonna do a Kickstarter and we'll raise money, and we need we need funding for our independent horror movie. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, people actually, you know, yeah. it's funny because it's um, Celebrity Crush is kind of a movie within a movie because we show parts of Chain Face Clown, the film that's kind of that this kid was in um, years earlier. So we thought it'd be cool to actually shoot Chain Face Clown. As a feature, you know, that would be cool. So I don't know if there's anyone's out there that wants to do the Kickstarter for Chain Face Clown. I'm behind it 100. percent Right, I'm ready. Oh, Chain Face Clown. Chain Face Clown. I like it. I like clown. the title of it. I do yeah, too. I do clown. too. We and we know some people. I that might, that might know some what, people. clowns. Yeah. No, that might, might. We know people that might know some people that know a few people. Uh, I know people that, that that actually get behind things like that. Let's 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 make it happen. Indep- oh, independent no. films, content, and you can do so many. What's so great about independent film? Um, you don't have to get any approval. You just like go with it, and for better or worse, sometimes you get like genius, and other times you're like, maybe we shouldn't have done that. You know, maybe that doesn't quite work. You know, there's something to be said for the studio system, and you know, I've written scripts at that level. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the development process, you, you hate it um, yeah. when you're working at the studio level. But at the same time, it's it, movies from Hollywood are the way they are. Um, and and because of that polish and that process, you know, mm-hmm. but, you know, so I see both sides. Right, right. Absolutely. So, I mean, we're talking about Celebrity Crush and, you know, a potential sequel and, and, and stuff. And did, did anybody see this comment that came in? I did. I put it up there. I missed it. Hey Jeff, my sexy husband. You have a. I don't know who that is. I, I don't I, know, I, dude. I, but yeah, that's, yeah. Well, no maybe that was supposed to be for another podcast. Yeah, and and <laughs> Roxanne says she'll, she'll play, play me. me. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you for that. We'll, we'll definitely <laughs> if we uh, if the movie happens. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yep. Okay, and and that's that's our show. 
that's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the magic of the show. I'm, I'm so what do you what do you got coming up? You said you got that horror thing coming up, Christmas horror. I have what, that, and you know, I'm just, right now I'm just I'm just writing scripts and hoping to get a couple things going. And there's nothing. I don't have any big announcements, unfortunately. But you know, I'm I'm working on different <clears throat> odds and ends in Hollywood, and it's funny. Like people don't realize it takes years sometimes to get things off the ground. Oh, you know? we know. You know Oh, you guys know, but we know. The audience at large, and you see that, yeah. and it, and I have appreciation for all movies because it, it is so, even the worst films, you know, are so hard to get and to make and get finding fun and funding for. Yeah, and yeah. um, you know, so that alone, when you see something in Amazon Prime, you're like flip through it, you're like, oh, this thing sucks. It might suck, and that's very true. But it would, you, you, I just appreciate the magic and the the hard work and the commitment. So. Yeah, we haven't we haven't put ours on Amazon Prime. We're still on YouTube with it. <laughs> YouTube's good. YouTube's good. I think you know. I made this one film, um, and uh, if you're out there, I'll, this is a message to my distributor uh, who I haven't heard from like in years, and it's called Twenty Nine Thousand Wishes, One Regret, and it's been on Roku. And that's one of the things about independent filmmaking is that mm -hmm. you might not hear from your distributor, and I I never heard from these guys, but they're still getting the film out there. And uh, if you're if you're listening to this podcast for twenty eight thousand is one, one regret, please contact me. I, I'd love to talk to you about the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little drama I did, and that was a film I made. Um, uh, literally, our budget must have been like twenty five hundred dollars. I'm not even exaggerating. Wow. Um, uh, my girlfriend did sound, and I operated camera, and we had a couple friends edit, and I edited a big chunk of the movie. And I just wanted to see, you know, I was talking about film school, if I could basically wear all the hats and finish a movie at that budget range and, you know, shoot it and edit it and all those things. And we did it. And it's and you can watch it. I think it's on Daily Motion and on, I think it's on Roku, too, as well. So hmm. check out Twenty Nine Thousand Wishes, One Regret. I'll have to write that one down. Yeah, I already did. Drama, drama, so, did you? Yeah. yeah. You already wrote that down? Yeah. Well, aren't you fucking special? Well, look, at, look at you, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see? It's out there. 29 I can't wishes read it. In, in one regret. No, it's one regret. regret. Yeah, one regret. One regret. <laughs> That's the, that'll be the sequel. That's the sequel, right? The regret. The regret part. <laughs> so uh, for everybody tuning in late, because we know how it is, um, Oliver, a.k.a. Robbie, uh, will be at TerraFest in... Conroe, Texas, December 17th and 18th. No excuses. None. Get off Everyone the has to go. You guys have to come down Get and off see the me and yep. we'll talk poltergeist. I'll, like I said, I will answer all your poltergeist questions and I know everyone has like millions of them. I mean, you also, I mean, not just poltergeist, but you were in a, in a, in a rather large comedy in Airplane 2, yes. correct? Yeah, airplane. Too. Mm -hmm. I love doing that. My dream. When I started airplane as a kid. My dream was to be in airplane, and lo and behold, there are holding auditions, and I met with the director, Ken Finkelman, great, really sweet guy, you know, and he did a, such a great uh, version of the script, and I felt so bad for him. And honestly, that we're just being honest here, talking, he wrote a really original draft of of the airplane movie, and the studio at the time made him rewrite the whole film so it was identical in many ways. To the first one, and not to say the first one wasn't genius in its own right, but he came up with such original comedy that really never made it to the screen. Mm -hmm. And I think that it really showed you, you know, what can happen. You know, you make a movie at the studio level. Right. So, um, but Airplane 2 was so much fun to do. And I, and I had a great time doing it. And all the people and Robert Hayes and Julie Haggerty were, they were so kind to me. And, you know, and it was a great change of pace because I had never done comedy before. And right. I got to be just completely over the top, you know, in every one of the scenes, I got a pie in the face and, and uh, it was just, I wasn't screaming. I didn't have like gook on my, on my body. And it was nice to wear a little suit when I went there. It was, <laughs> it was, it was so much fun to do airplane too. I loved it. Well, yeah, it's kind of like another oh, classic. Yeah. You got to hold a puppy dog for a while. You know, I know it, it's funny. Everything I acted as a kid, I always had a pet and, and I learned a lot about dogs too. And I, and thank God I, I loved animals. Um, and on the set, um, the trainer, they never 
They never hit the animals and never punished them. They were treated with love, kindness, and goodies. And I always had in my pocket uh, a couple little meat treats for the guy, for the dogs. And they said, when he when he does this, give him the treat. And he's your dog. It's and so he took command. All the dogs always took commands from me. Like Rip, Rip was the name of the dog from Poltergeist, and uh, his screen name was E Buzz. But the little dog uh, Scraps, he was so such a sweet little doggy, you know. So. I love working with pets and all the movies. That's awesome. Nice. You know, but you, you played, you have played both ends of the spectrum from one of the scariest horrors to one of the funniest comedies. Which side do you prefer best or is, is it just equally? I, I just enjoy, you know, it's funny. Um, it's interesting to ask that question because I kind of got into acting because I was beat up so much as a little boy. Mm. And I was a little guy. I mean, I was a little guy, you know, in the schoolyard. And I had to make myself bigger. I had to act. So I kind of credit those bullying experiences to my acting background because you have eight guys that are towering over you. You have to make yourself seem bigger or do something to kind of make sure you don't get pummeled and end up in a trash can. <laughs> so um, I always pretended to be someone else and i kind of channeled that and that's what allowed me to do you know become a different person and getting back to your question with comedy or drum it really doesn't matter to me i love just being someone else and moving mm -hmm. into that that become that person you live and you breathe that human you know it's a new right. person you become um because it's an old cliche you know the from acting classes you know acting is not acting it's being and you know it's a cliche but it's actually so so true so if you're doing mm -hmm. comedy you're in that moment and you're playing. And this is what I always tell actors when I'm working with them as a director. And no matter what you're doing, you want to play it real. You want to be in the moment. So mm -hmm. you're not pushing for the joke. The, the joke, if the joke is there, it will be found. And the same thing with drama or, or being terrified. If you're scared, the camera is, is like a lie detector. It, it, you know, it's going to it's going to test your honesty and the audience can see it, especially mm -hmm. when it's on a huge screen. So I just I just try to be that person and live in that moment no matter what I'm doing. Excellent. Yeah. Simple advice. Yeah, yeah, it was. I, it was. It was very well put. So, uh, is there anybody that you'd like to work with that you haven't had the chance? Well, I, you know, it's funny. I'd like to direct a movie for Steven Spielberg now. I, I, I've <laughs> acted as a kid. I'd, Steven, if you're out there, I'd like to do. I'd love to do a movie um, under his auspices because he's just he's such the he's the genius, you know. And it was so funny because we I was working on a screenplay at 20th Century Fox, and. Um, the, these are guys who made some pretty big films, and they even said to me, they're like children. Um, they said, hey, when the script's done, would you show it to Steven to get his notes? Because he's the, you know, you can be a professional filmmaker, but you'll never be at his level because he's such the master of cinema, of, of filmmaking. So they wanted to get notes if a movie got made. And he's the guy who could give you great notes, and you know, because he can anticipate what audiences think and feel, and um, he truly is the master filmmaker. So if I got to work with anyone, you know, before I leave this earth, I'd like to uh, make a movie for him. That would be cool. that, Steve. Yeah, Mr. Spielberg. You know, it's come on, on. Ro it's Robbie. You have to do it. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> you yeah. have to do it, Steve. But I, it's Robbie. I, just feel, yeah. I mean, honestly, I just feel so great that I, I was such a. a He's out there saying, nah, I saved his ass once already. <laughs> That's so much, yeah, I say. <laughs> Get this one get out of jail free card. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, well, come on, I landed on free parking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't I get something for that? I, and honestly, I mean, it, it's so. I mean, I just feel blessed that I got opportunity just to work with him. I mean, right. You know, it was like he was like, and I think in the history of cinema in the 20th century, he's probably you know in the top five filmmakers. You know, especially in the oh, genre and the impact. Yeah, he's had oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I knew I knew somebody I could see it in Leo's face. Yeah, so I, just, I know. Go ahead. So you've gone from uh, trading stocks to making films, acting. Uh, what do you do in your downtime or what do you dork out about? Like, like, what's one thing that, you know, like, uh, you know, we, we had like Bruce Valanche on and like he liked, uh, you know, studying the history of like sunken ships and stuff like that. Uh, is there something unique that that you uh, you uh, really dork out about? Hmm. I just love, you know, you're going to laugh. I know this sounds totally insane. Maybe it's the dystopian side of me, 
but I like studying like nuclear Holocaust scenarios. I know it sounds awful and just dystopian weird, you know, things like that. And I, you know, honestly, I guess it's something when I was a kid, I was so afraid. I grew up in the eighties and I was so afraid of uh, nuclear Holocaust. So <laughs> I, I love studying history and cold war history and all mm -hmm. the different things. And I, and it's not like I, I want to see a nuclear war occur. I mean, God, no. I, I actually don't ever want to see that ever happen. But it's really interesting. I love to study those aspects of history and you know, and humanity mm -hmm. and all the reasons why those events happen, everything from the Cuban Missile Crisis to, you know, to present day situations. And I've really been into, like, I love reading about geopolitics. And when I was at USC, I, I almost majored in poli-sci, believe it or not. I know that's so different than cinema. Um, and I remember a professor there was like, you should, you should switch your major from film to political science. So I love, I love studying politics and I won't get into politics, but I like um, reading about history and I'm a really big you know, mm -hmm. history buff, even going back to the, you know, the civil war. So I, yeah. I guess in my downtime, I'd love to read about those events and think about them and consider them. And, you know, I, I think it's just, it's an intellectual kind of game in my head. And I, my friends and I talk about it too, from USC and we have to discuss these things and, It'd be great to make a historical movie, you know. I was just going to say, I do I see a documentary coming I, in the near I, future? I'd love to do it. I mean, I love docs. And I think I've never made a doc before. Um, and I think they're really hard to make. I really, mm. I I think it's a, such a challenge. And maybe I could do it. But I'd like to do, a, I like narrative film filming only because you can control the storytelling. You know the story you're going to tell. With, with all my friends who make docs, you don't know the story you're going to get till you're on set. And it's not even a set till it's happening. And then the story kind of comes to you and it's created with narrative filmmaking. You know, you know exactly, you know, shot by shot, how you're going to tell your story. True. So that, that's kind of my feeling. Not to say if there wasn't a subject matter that was just so brilliant that, you're like, you know, we got to we got to tell this as a doc. But I, I think I, I those are so challenging. I don't know if I'm even capable of doing that. Of course you are. Yeah, of course. Of course yeah, you are. Yeah. You have to. You, yeah. <laughs> you have to have faith in yourself. Yeah, and I mean, I think look at, you're right. I look mean, at, with the right subject matter, yeah. anything's possible. Yeah. I'm just saying, I mean, look at the things that you've created and things you've been part of, you know, 40 years plus. That is really true. You I, know? I was just, I was just a kid. I mean, with Poltergeist is just so amazing that they, it was like lightning in a bottle, of, you know, that, and it really how many things truly worked on that movie, you know, and having made films now, I'm amazed at what happened on that set, you know? Yeah. And my understanding is they came ahead of schedule and under budget. And how many times do you hear about that on a studio film? You know, but I think my producers, you had Frank Marshall and Kathleen Kennedy, see it all in Toby Hooper and Steven Spielberg. So you have this great team, you know, and, you know, they say, you know, 90% of a director's job is casting. And, and I think Toby and Steven, truly chose the right actors for every part in that and it really does show on the screen they didn't rush it and i think that was really that's really key sometimes you see movies and you're like they just rushed into doing it and they they right. chose great actors but you know are they really right for that role and the chemistry isn't there well uh, you know of course they came under budget they moved the headstones without moving the bodies yeah. they, they, had, they had help from the, they had the help from the spirit world so of course they're gonna, you know. <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect sense, right? I was waiting for something like yeah, yeah, I was I was waiting. I was I knew it was coming sooner or later. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean now that we back all the way back to poltergeist. Back to poltergeist, yes. Was there anything creepy on the set that happened? You know behind not, the scenes, like no. There was nothing, you know, it's the thing. There was nothing that, nothing that didn't, that doesn't happen in any other set. Um, there wasn't anything creepy at all. I mean, uh, yeah, I never had any issues. I'm trying to think, is there anything like totally crazy? And there really wasn't on that set. So I just had a, for me, Poltergeist, the set was like going to camp. And I remember like, it was so great the way they introduced me to everything too. Mm -hmm. um, like Frank Marshall it would tell me like, we're going to go back to the set. We built this house and the way they introduced the tree to me, they never said, Oh my God, this is a scary thing. And you're going to be terrified. And you know, they never made it feel like it was going to be a challenge. They made it feel like it was going to camp is that's mm -hmm. the best way I could describe it. Every day was like a new adventure. And then we presented it to me. They made it really fun. Like for instance, the scene, when we're being sucked into the closet and they said, what we're going to do Oliver is we're going to 
we're going to give you a harness. And I'm like, okay. And you put this on and you put wires and you attach them to this wall and to the wall. And the room's going to actually change or go on an angle. So the camera, it's like a forced perspective. Camera's going to be here and you're going to be falling, you know, falling towards the camera. And then we're going to animate. And I said, How, what about the wires? Because I was that kind of kid. I wanted to know. It says, we're going to do something called rotoscoping. And so we're going to blow up every frame and we're going to animate the wires out. So you won't even see those will be invisible. So that's how they did the scene when I'm being sucked in the closet. Mm. And this is, you know, before CGI or anything right, else. Right. It's all physical, pretty much physical effects. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. So awesome. you got to fly. Yeah. It was a, a, you've never been on a harness. It's, it's a, it's a blast to do that. I loved it as a kid too. And you're just flying around and they, they swing you. And I love, uh, yeah, I had a blast doing that. Is uh is there anything left from set that you kind of like snuck off or or hid <laughs> or took? <laughs> no, but I have one thing. Um, at the wrap party, Mr. Spielberg gave me one of the slates, and I think there were like four or five of them. And he said, "Here's here's here's a slate for the movie." And he really thanked me for doing my job, you know. And I thanked him because it was the it was the best experience ever. That's so I have the cool. slate from Poltergeist, and when I'm That's off this earth, I want it to go. I'll put it on record. <laughs> I don't want it to end up in someone's personal collection. I want the Poltergeist slate to go to the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. So when they seventy years from now, and they're doing the exhibit on Toby Hooper or Steven Spielberg or anybody, that they bring it out and they put it out there, and everyone can go, "Okay, that was a, that was the slate from Poltergeist." That would be really cool. Yeah. And that, yeah, and I think it's a good place for it to go to be preserved for our eternity. Right. Makes sense, right? Yeah. So we have about four or five minutes left uh, for the show because I know Leo has another one. We're running a little late. Uh, any questions and comments out there in in Cyberland? You, now's the time to get them up here. I mean, comments have been coming in all night, but if you got a question oh. for this amazing guest, I'd say you get it up there. Otherwise, Jeff and yes. Leo are going to suck up the last yep. four minutes. And I promise to answer it to the best of my ability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because these two are definitely going to suck up the, the next three minutes and 30 seconds. You see how I keep bringing it down, right? Because I yeah, keep talking. It's, it's <laughs> sticking. You know, we got it. Ask your questions. Well, you got it. You got it. Jeff, uh, you have chicken waiting for you. Chicken? Is it chicken tonight? Um, ribs. What's that for dinner? Good. That sounds good. Uh, no, I think I think it's a steak. I, I had I had supermarket sushi. It wasn't the best. But, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not sick. I'm not. I don't have food poisoning, so I I feel ahead. <laughs> true, any, that, any, true that. Any sushi meal you don't you don't get sick from from the supermarket, you're in good shape. That's right. <laughs> uh, just uh, just a quick question about poltergeist. Um, was there any sort of like uh, kind of paranormal experts like the unset to like uh you know guide or or you know give uh suggestions no i i i think on poltergeist too will samson um he blessed this is my understanding i didn't ever saw him do it but i know on poltergeist too he blessed the set i think i you know because i think he was a shaman too the actor i'm not sure you could google that I'm, everything's out there mm. but yeah he blessed the set um and that was a i mean that was a difficult shoot for has nothing to do with paranormal activity. You know, that film was just, that was a hard film for, I think for the filmmakers to make the mm. sequel. So it was good. I think it was good that will, uh, he blessed the set. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. So there's your, I was hearing a dog. Answer. You were hearing a dog. That, yeah. That's My dog. Multi, I think. That's from the other universe. That's from the other multiverse. That's yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. ours. That's the yeah. dog. It, it's a shadow dog, that's, Jeff. It's a shadow. It's, it's one of the skin it's The shadow, one of the shadow. The aliens, dogs. aliens heard this conversation and they, they wanted to make themselves known. <laughs> See, it's coming through the screen from you. Yeah, it's it's coming from. Uh, yeah, I'm. I actually, I didn't want to tell you guys. I have a vortex of energy, like Skinwalker Ranch, above my house, and I, and this alien activity. I just didn't want to mention it. <laughs> great, great. We'll watch this back tomorrow and go. Where did this hour go? Yeah, right. But if I, if I, we're if there, I, but we're not. If I, if I end up back on the mothership, don't be mad. Just, just know what happened. <laughs> this is my last interview on Earth before the aliens took me. Yeah, so but don't you go and I'll go. They will return him. Get me. They, they will. It's like, return oh, him. Look, 
it's like December. close encounters. You know, I will yeah. come back one day. I, I can't yeah. guarantee when, but I, I will come back. Oh, but we know when. You'll be back December 17th and 18th. Yeah, that you know what? That is so true. The aliens, they, they have They've to. They've already booked it. They have Texas. to bring you back. I got to right. do the hard mention. There's no way I could be on the mothership and miss that. Right. Exactly. You know? I'll, so. I'll talk to them about that. I think I have it all worked out. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So, like I said, December 17th and 18th in Conroe, Texas. The and I'll be there. The Terra Fest, a Christmas horror convention. So, like I said earlier, there's no excuses. Get off your couches. Walk down, drive down, fly down, whatever you need to do. Whatever you head have to down, do to get there. That's all that matters. Right. You have to right. Go lock those doors and you have to come see me. Bring them something don't, really, really weird, just not honey. Yeah, just don't bring me honey containers of honey. <laughs> right. No, no honey. Else. Uh, no Kool Aid or honey or, you know, uh, yeah. I as long as you do that, we're, I think we're in good shape. But if we have a tattoo of his face, yeah, just and you know, try to avoid having a tattoo of my face on any body part. You know, I, I appreciate the commitment, <laughs> but uh, maybe avoid that part too. But <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so, with that, we'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. I want to thank everybody for watching this fine evening. And, uh, you know, me, just Google Leo Pond. You'll find a bunch of stuff. Could be true, could be not. I'm not going to say which is which, but I run the Dorfening Podcast Network. We've got a ton of awesome shows on the network. There's a lot of awesome people doing a lot of awesome stuff. Uh, and uh, like Ben said, I'm going to be doing another live show in about 45 minutes. Uh, so 9 p.m. <coughs> back here. And uh, Oliver, where do you like people interacting with you on the social medias? You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. And I'm kind of late to the show with Instagram, so I don't have a lot of followers. So you'll be you'll be one of the first. Um, so you can interact with me in those places. And, you know, I really have to get more into Twitter and everything else. So, yeah, reach me on Facebook and Instagram and uh, we can chat. Yeah, and uh, get on TikTok and Mastodon and, uh, yeah, all I'm of that. I have to get into that, too. I'm, I'm kind of old school. I'm, I'm more on Facebook and Instagram, I guess. Um, <laughs> nothing, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong nope, with that. Yeah. yeah, Jeffrey. Yeah, I don't do any of that stuff. You can find us at uh, stilltoken.com, though. Talking with the dead on Facebook. Don't Google me. Google Leo. He's got some cool shit you could look at. <laughs> Benjamin. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, like Jeff said, stilltoking.com. You can find out everything you want to know about us from the comic book to the TV series to the animation to what we have going on next. We don't know what it is either. It just happens. Um, but no, definitely want to thank all of her coming out and hanging out with us tonight and just doing what we do, you know, enjoying life and having fun to all our veterans and first responders. We want to thank you for doing what you do. So people like us can do what we do. Stay safe. We're out of here. We'll see you next week. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. So come on. Hey.